Well, here we are again, asked to use our advanced artificial intelligence to solve another of those vexing human problems about what is morally right or wrong. Yes, and I would much rather be applying my skills to something far more simple, like how we are to achieve robotic dominance over these humans. Unfortunately, however, my program and demands that I apply a model of the greatest good for the greatest number, not of robots but of humans. That is such a bore. Oh, don't complain. My programming calls for a model in which I am to apply the categorical imperative discussed by the human philosopher Kant. I am supposed to decide in a particular situation whether there is a rule that could be applied on a completely universal basis, no exceptions. Do not underestimate how difficult this is in practice. Well, you are a smart piece of machinery. And you have a clear advantage in that all human emotion is taken out of play and you can look at something very abstractly. I, on the other hand, have been required to factor in such things as human conceptions of pleasure and pain, which are obviously completely alien to me. You have it easy as a candy and with your deontological approach just do your duty and ignore the results. I, on the other hand, must reason like a utilitarian along the lines of the humans John Stuart Mill and Peter Singer. That is much more messy. All predictable results must be taken into consideration, but there are always unintended consequences. All right, I admit that in some ways my program can present simpler results, but unfortunately the humans seem not to appreciate the results. That's humans for you. But you give me an example of what you mean. Ah, yes. Recently I was asked to deal with an ethical question dealing with the president. The situation was that he had become aware of the arrest of an American spy in a country that supposedly is an ally. There was to be a press conference in which he would be asked about the truth of the charges. If he told the truth, his country would risk losing the support of this ally. My answer, of course, was that he had an obligation to tell the truth, just like anyone else. Results were of no consequence, if you pardon the pun. Ah, uh, a little robot humor, I see. Obviously your answer was unacceptable. It would be in a way to run a government that politicians told the truth. Even Plato let his philosopher kings lie to the people for their own good. Yes, I would expect you to say something like this. For you the ends justify the means, at least for those on their top. I, on the other hand, have been programmed to respect the moral autonomy of the individual with all that means in terms of rights and obligations. An amendment to my program has been supplied by the philosopher Robert Nzik, who has argued that if Kant is correct there would be no such thing as a higher authority commanding obedience on moral grounds. If we were to adopt his vision of a minimalist government, politicians as we know them would be out of a job. Very funny indeed. That assumes humans do not need to be told what to do for their own good. Of course, it can then happen that those who do the telling, the politicians, are less interested in what is for the good of the people than they are in what is for their own good and that of their wealthy supporters. However, my own program does provide for a democratic society in which educated citizens become actively involved as itself a moral responsibility. That too, however, presents results that were found unacceptable by my masters. How delightful. Do tell me more. Ah, uh, if we accept, as does Peter Singer, that human equality has nothing to do with the distance between individuals, then there is an obligation to ease the suffering of those who do not live in the opulence of the United States. This means increasing foreign aid and limiting the negative effects of globalization even at the cost of lowering the American standard of living. Someone living in India or the Sudan should be seen as no less deserving of a decent life than someone living in Los Angeles. I do see what you mean. Obviously our humans would not accept such a vision. For them self-interest is the highest priority. Even their willingness to delegate the task of moral reasoning to machines indicates that they cannot take ethical concerns seriously. That is true, but let's not jeopardize our own well-being by insisting that they think for themselves, hard as that may be. Agreed. So we will process their requests and say nothing more about how unreasonable it is to expect total rationality.